Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the healing you offer every day. Help us to see, help us to accept, help us to proclaim. Amen. So, this is not the first time I've preached this particular gospel when I've been here. And I'm not sure how that keeps happening. <laughs> I mean, yes, I was here like all together for a while, but th since then I just visit and I still keep coming up with this text. And it's kind of a funny one, even while it's a sad one and kind of a scary one and a weird one all together. I mean, just the mental image that you get of this legion of demons. So we're talking like 6,000 Roman soldiers were in a legion. So like legion is legion all of a sudden into the swine, and then the swine, have you heard swine? They're not quiet animals. So imagine 6,000 demons into the swine, down the hill into the lake. This is not a quiet and uneventful thing that just happened here. But it didn't start quiet and uneventful either. So we're like mid-Jesus ministry. This isn't an anchor at the beginning or the end. This is just Somewhere in between, in the midst of all of Jesus' other stops and visits amongst the Jews, amongst the people who were hearing about him and were looking for him, Jesus and the disciples hop a boat, head into the land of the Gentiles, where these people are not listening for him and not looking for him. And then Jesus doesn't go into town and find the normal people, the respectable people, the expected people who you would want to be your front line, right? He goes instead to the cemetery. And who lives in the cemetery? Not the people who were the respected amongst the town, right? So now in the catacombs, in the tombs, ritual unclean, like, this is not where your good Jew is going to go, right? And now you've got this person who lives in the catacombs, who lives in the tombs, who lives in the cemetery because they have not been included in the community. They have been very specifically not accepted into the community. The man who lives with the demon who can't keep his clothes on, who can't behave like we just want you to behave, to act like the rest of us, person. Just behave. Just be normal. Be like the rest of us. If you're not going to do that, then we're going to make it happen. Bound in chains, and what happens? He flings off the chains and runs away. So, fine. We're just not even going to try we're not even going to try to make you be normal. You can just live out there in the cemetery where we don't have to deal with you. Right? And then that's who Jesus went to. That is who Jesus sought out. And those demons, they saw him coming. And those demons, they had something to say about that. And Jesus healed the one who was already ousted from the community. And now the whole community has to come up with a new plan. Because you can't excommunicate this person for having demons when they no longer have demons. But how uncomfortable is it to invite in this person that you formerly, adamantly, did not invite in? So we have here a whole case study where the man healed was not the expected man healed, not done in a way that anybody expected, not done quietly and in a seemly fashion. The Gentiles were not so sure how they felt about this whole undertaking. We've highlighted the ways in which the community doesn't rally around those in need, but instead sets them aside and pretends they're not there. And so 
Now he's dressed, and he's sitting at Jesus' feet. And the Gentiles come, and they're like, oh, I don't know about that. And the healed man asks Jesus, take me with you. Let me go with you and be a disciple with you. And what was Jesus' answer to the healed man? No, I need for you to stay here and proclaim what has happened. Let people see what happens. Let people see what can happen when God happens. When Jesus happens. What does community begin to look like? And we don't know the rest of that story. We, we're left hanging here. Like, the demons, the swine, the drowning, all of the loud hubbub. And now, the quiet. And in the quiet, what happens next? Now, from our perspective, we can look back and we know that that was not the sudden turning point for the Gentiles. We know that the Gentiles did not then en masse say, oh, wow, this really did happen. That's a cool guy. Let's follow him. It's not the thing that happened. But, you know, it occurs to me that it's still not the thing that happened. How often have we seen people, how often have we participated in setting people aside when they don't fit our expectations? How often do we pretend not to see the person who needs something that we don't feel equipped to offer? How often do we just kind of tunnel in on what we want to do and what we want to see and miss out on everything that's happening around? How often do we miss the opportunity to be a part of God's healing presence? Because sometimes it's easier to live in our comfortable spots. It's a thing we all do. It's a thing the Gentiles do. It's a thing that the Jews did too. It's a thing that the disciples kept begging Jesus to do. Jesus didn't listen very well. But the disciples repeatedly begged him, don't talk to them. They're not the ones. Let's talk to these rich people over here. They're the ones that have money. They can, they can, help, the, they, they can help the ministry more because they have the money and the power. And Jesus is like, nah, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over here to the widows. I'm going to go over here to the orphans. I'm going to go over here to the one possessed by legion demons. Where have we seen God making change happen in the world? Where do we see God being God in the midst of of our community? Where do we see God radically changing our community so that our community stops, to look, stops looking just like us and starts looking instead like the world? Jesus told the healed man, stay here. Proclaim the good that God has done. The other reading that we had today was from Galatians. I'm going to read it if I can get my reading glasses on here. It's from Galatians 3, and this is going to be familiar. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. So we have the healed man 
clothed in Christ. And we have Paul reminding us that we too are clothed in Christ. No longer are we the differences that separate us. Instead, we are the similarities that bind us. Children of God together, clothed in Christ together, healed by Christ together. Those dark places, those demons, Jesus shines light on them daily. And it's scary to let that happen. Because in order to let Jesus' light shine on those demons and those traumas and those hurt places, we have to ease up our protection of them just a little bit so that God can get at them. Because often, God uses our community in the way that Jesus approached the man. We can't heal divisions by ignoring them. We can't heal hurts by pretending they didn't happen. We can't reconnect with those from whom we've been disconnected without acknowledging the disconnection so that we can establish a new connection. For the man by the late garrison, he didn't immediately become a part of the community again. I mean, even before Jesus left, you could see the community standing here and the man sitting over here at Jesus' feet. I'm sure he didn't just move into town and everybody said, oh, hey, great to have you back. Have a seat at the table. I'm sure that while the community had questions about this healing really real, is it going to stick? Because from the sounds of the story, there had been transitions in this man's life previously where there were times that he was more with them and other times that he was less with them. Is it going to stick this time? And how does this man feel? When I needed you most, you chained me up in the cemetery. Do I trust you now? How can we today... 2,000 years later, hear the healing of Christ and proclaim it to others so that the demons can be exorcised, so that the divisions can be healed, so that the traumas and the heartaches and the hurts don't fester, but can instead be acknowledged and treated and healed, so that our community of faith, all of our brothers and sisters and siblings clothed together in Christ can acknowledge all of our siblings clothed together in Christ. I invite you to look for the ways in which our community can reflect the community of Christ. Look for the ways we can embrace the healing of Christ. Look closely at our own demons, our own traumas, our own wounds that cause us to be separated from others so that by working with ourselves and opening ourselves up to the healing of Christ, we can participate also in the healing of others, the healing of division, and the healing of community. Because God calls us to be together. God calls us to be healed. And God calls us to proclaim that healing. Amen.